there are basically three major misunderstandings that at least people like me um, have had about this issue. I just thought I'd walk you through them. Um, the first is about the speed of climate change. Um, I felt, you know, growing up in my teens, in my 20s, um, even in my early 30s, felt that climate change was real, it was important to worry about, it was something that um, we had to consider when we thought about the future. But that when we were thinking about that future, it was something that was gonna happen a very long time from now. We were dealing with some issues that were the legacy of the Industrial Revolution, which happened several centuries ago, and the most intense impacts from climate change were going to be hitting us at the very fastest decades from now and probably not more like centuries from now. Um, in fact, half of all of the emissions that we've put into the atmosphere from the burning of fossil fuels have come in the last three decades. That means that we've done more damage since Al Gore published his first book on warming than in all of the millennia of human history, yeah, than in all the millennia of human history before. Um, it's since the UN established the, their climate change panel, the IPCC, broadcasting to the world unmistakable certainty about this um, issue, which means that we've done more damage knowingly than we ever managed in ignorance. Um, we've done more damage since the premiere of Seinfeld than in all of human history before. So I'm 36 years old. My life contains this entire story. I have memories six years old, five years old, driving around in cars, even flying around in planes. Since that time, we have collectively taken the planet from a stable situation to the brink of catastrophe, just since I have memories. Much of that industrialization, much of that development was done, in fact, in my name as a kind of relatively wealthy person in the relatively wealthy West. Um, we are now seeing the impacts of that industrialization and that development in real time. You know, the, the extreme weather that we're seeing every year, unprecedented global heat waves, hurricane after hurricane through the Caribbean, California wildfires burning more than a million acres last year. The previous year was a, a, a record in California. The year before that was a record in California. Um, this is a completely unprecedented climate system that we're living in. And it's happening because of what we're doing today in real time. So the speed is one big thing that I, I feel like the world does not yet appreciate about climate change. It's certainly something that until quite recently I didn't appreciate. The second big thing is the scope of the issue. I live in New York. New York's actually on the coast, but it doesn't feel like it's on the coast. And I spent my whole adult life thinking that if we were going to be dealing with climate change, it meant sea level rise. And that meant that so long as you lived away from the shoreline, you were gonna be safe, that this was an issue, a threat, a challenge, that we could escape, that we could live outside of or beyond. But the more you know about this issue, the more you see its impacts everywhere. So economists um, doing research on climate change estimate that by the end of the century, if we don't change course, we'll have a global GDP that is at least 20% and possibly 30% smaller than it would be without climate change. 30% is an impact that is twice as big as the Great Depression, and it would be permanent. Um, you see the impacts on conflict. There's a relationship between temperature and war. For every half degree of warming we get, we have to see an increase of between 10 and 20% of conflict, which means, again, if we end up on the, where we're headed by the end of the century, we will have twice as much war as we have today, and possibly more. And the, the impact on conflict is not just between states. It rises the, ra uh, the rates of murder, of domestic assault, of rape, um, beyond conflict. It increases incidence of mental illness, um, breakdowns of people who are already in mental hospitals. It increases rates of autism and ADHD. Um, the impacts elsewhere in public health are quite dramatic. We are now killing from the air pollution that is produced from the burning of fossil fuels globally. Nine million people each year are dying from air pollution from fossil fuels. That is a scale of suffering bigger than the Holocaust, and we're doing it every single year. Um, heat has an impact on cognitive performance. It has an impact on mood and well-being. Um, it has an impact on agricultural yields, which are gonna be 50% smaller than they would be without climate change by the end of the century. Everywhere you look, 
there are impacts. This is not something that you can escape by not living on the shoreline. It will impact all of our lives in the coming decades, probably quite profoundly. So that's the scope issue. And then the third issue is severity. We are now um, 1.1 degrees warmer than the pre-industrial baseline. That is already outside the window of temperatures that have been closed all of human history. Never before has the planet been as warm as it is now, um, as warm as it is when you and I walk on it every day. That means that everything we know of about human civilization, everything we know about human culture, has been built and developed in a climate system that we have now left behind. It is as though we have landed on an entirely different planet, which is already changing as we set foot on it. 